Hello friends, in this video, we are going to learn some 25 important and conceptual questions that will come under building material cement. Let's get into the questions. First question is, the specific gravity of commonly available Portland cement is? This is the most important questions that is asked in various examinations. The options are 2.58 to 3.23, option B 3.56 to 4.10, option C 3.10 to 3.20, option D 2.89 to 3.50. Just think for about 10 seconds and give the correct answer. Here we go. The correct answer is option C, 3.10 to 3.20. Basically, on an average, 3.15 is the specific gravity of commonly available Portland cement. Now, let's see some more important points regarding specific gravity of Portland cement. This specific gravity is found by using Lee Chatley's flask and the fluid used to identify the specific gravity is kerosene because if we use water that will be that the cement will get clogged in water so that we use kerosene to identify the specific gravity and it is not an indication of quality the specific gravity value is used in calculation of mixed proportions so now let's move on to second question gypsum consists of what is gypsum it's something like a chemical component that will be added during chemic cement manufacturing. Option A, H2S and carbon dioxide. Option B, calcium sulfate and water. Option C, lime and H2O. Option D, carbon dioxide and calcium. And your time starts now. Here we go. The answer is option B, hydrated calcium sulfate or calcium sulfate with water. Some more points are, gypsum is used to control the rate of hardening because in cement manufacturing, there will be some four box compounds will be there in a cement. Those compounds like C3A, that is Cal tricalcium aluminate and tricalcium silicate will be responsible for flash setting of cement. So to retard that setting and rate of hardening, we use gypsum to control the rate of hardening. Gypsum also gives considerably greater strength and hardness. So this is all about the gypsum. And now let's move on to third question. Low heat cement contains lower percentage of when we uh, take low heat cement it means that heat of hydration is very low compared to ordinary opc so the options are option a tricalcium aluminate c3a option b tricalcium silicate option c dicalcium silicate c2s option d c4af that is tetracalcium aluminoferrate your time starts now. Here we go. The option is option A, tricalcium aluminate, or we can call it call it as cellite as a common name. Some are notes to be noted are C3A is responsible for flash setting and this will be retarded by using gypsum as we seen in the last question. C3A has the maximum heat of hydration of about 866 joule per gram. This is the maximum heat of hydration among all the four box compounds formed in cement. 
It is a least stable compound and is also responsible for sulfur attacks. Now let's see the fourth question. Cement used in construction of docks and harbors is. When we say docks and harbors, it means that it is construction in a marine environment. Option A, blast furnace slag cement. Option B, waterproof cement. Option C, hydrophobic cement. Option D, sulfate resisting Portland cement. And your time starts now. Just think about the answer. Here we go. The correct answer is option D, sulfate resisting Portland cement. And let's see some other notes. Why we use sulfate resisting Portland cement in marine environments? Because it has low alite and phthalate. What is phthalate? Phthalate is nothing but C4AF, that is tetracalcium aluminoferrate. And what is alite? Alite is nothing but C3S tricalcium silicate so in sulfate resisting portland cement low alite and phthalates are there so that it will sustain the corrosion and also the heat of hydrogen is very less when we use low alite and phthalate compound in a cement foundations in chemically aggressive soils in those areas we will use sulfate resisting portland cement to resist the corrosion uh, because of salty environment. Now let's move on to fifth question. Fifth question is specific surface of Portland cement should not be less than. What is specific surface? It is nothing but a free surface area that is produced per gram of the Portland cement. And your options are 2500 centimeter square per gram option B 2250 centimeter square per gram option C 2000 option D 2520 Thus think about it and your time starts now Here we go. The correct option is option B, 2250 cm square per gram. When we spread the cement in a free surface per gram of the cement, it will give a surface area of 2250 cm square for a normal Portland cement. This specific surface is found by fineness test and finer the cement higher is the rate of gain of strength if we use very fine cement then rate of gain of strength will be high so this is an advantage of using very fine graded cement so how to calculate this uh, specific surface area there are three methods one is sieve method second one is air permeability method third one is sedimentation method When we say cement is finer, the rate of gain of strength is higher, but the ultimate strength remains same that is corresponding to the material we are using. So if we use finer cement, then the rate of gain of strength, how fast the strength is gained is increased, but the ultimate strength remains same. So fineness of cement is measured in terms of specific surface that we have seen and a permeability method can also be called as Narsen blains method and sedimentation method can also be called as Wagner's turbidimeter method. In sieve method, what we use is a sample that is placed on a 90 micron sieve and it is continuously sieved for 15 minutes. 
and whatever the residue left is calculated and that residue by weight should not be uh, greater than like 10% for OPC and 5% for other cement categories like RPC, uh, rapid hardening cement, Portland Poseidon cement. For those cement, 5% uh, residue by weight is the limit. For OPC, it is 10 percentage. In air permeability, uh, we use 40 micron perforated plate. It's unlike uh, we use in sieve method. In sieve method, we use 90 micron uh, perforated plate to sieve the cement. And in air permeability, we use 40 micron perforated plate. In Wagner turbidimeter test, uh, cement is dispersed uh, uniformly in a rectangular glass tank. That tank is filled with kerosene and some light rays are passed in a photoelectric cell and the readings are taken. That readings will be in centimeter square per gram. So this is all about this specific surface. So correct option is 2250 centimeter square per gram. Now let's move on to sixth question. Order of decreasing rate of hydration is we have already seen in a question which has the maximum heat of hydrogen is nothing but C3A. So uh, let's move on to the options. Option A, C3A is greater than C4AF, greater than C3S, greater than C2S or option B or option C or option D which is the correct one. Takes 10 seconds and find the correct one. Your time starts now. Here we go. The correct option is option D, C3A, that is cellite, C3S, that is allite, C4AF, that is phthalate, C2S, that is belite. In the previous question itself, we see that cellite, that is C3A, has the maximum heat of hydration and is followed by C3S and is followed by C4AF and the least heat of hydration uh, is for C2S and let's see some more important points. C3A has a rate of hydration of about 865 joule per gram, C3S 500 joule per gram, C4AF 420 joule per gram, C2S the least rate of hydration 260 joule per gram. So this is the four box compounds and the corresponding rate of hydration. C3, yes, that is uh, tricalcium silicate is uh, in a cement, it contains about 30 to 50 percentage. In dicalcium silicate, it is about 20 to 45 percentage in a cement. And for uh, C3A, tricalcium aluminate, it will be 8 to 12 percentage. And tetracalcium aluminate ferrate is 6 to 10 percentage. C3S uh, increases the resistance to freezing and thawing because it has the uh, strength uh, property and the height of hydration is about 500 joule per gram. And C3A uh, is responsible for flaccid as we see in, in the last question and uh, it is liable for sulfur attacks and it's the least stable combo. Now let's move on to next seventh question. The field test for the quality of cement consists of consists in putting a small quantity of cement in a bucket containing water. So we are uh, putting some cement in a bucket of water. So what will happen? A good quality cement will. Your options are it will immediately dissolve or it will float on the water surface or it will sink to the bottom or it will produce steam. Just think for 10 seconds. Here
here we know the correct option is option B it will float initially it will float on the water surface a good quality cement will float on the water surface and after some time only it will sink it should float for some time before they sink tiny particles floats due to surface tension why it floats because cement has tiny particles and fine cement has more tiny part tiny particle which has more specific area so tiny particles floats due to surface tension rather rather than full quantity of cement by beyond sea so this is the reason why cement particles float on water surface initially when it is put on water after some time only it will sink to the bottom now let's move on to eighth question it's very an interesting question cement fondue is the trade name of have you ever heard of this term cement fondue no problem okay let's see the options expanding cement option b hydrophobic cement option c high alumina cement option d colored cement just think for 10 seconds and guess the answer Here we go. The correct option is high alumina cement. High alumina cement is uh, called by the trade name of cement fondue. This cement fondue that is high alumina cement is mainly used for concrete pipes for sewerage purposes and it's also used in refractory concrete. What does it mean by refractory concrete? Uh, the construction the construction where very high amount of heat will be there so in order to sustain high amount of heat we we use high alumina cement or we can say cement fondue so this is all about the cement fondue now let's move on to ninth question which are the following are responsible for efflorescence what is efflorescence? Efflorescence is nothing but it's a salty appearance in the top surface of the cement due to evol evolution of salt or uh, some chemicals involved in a cement hydration, mainly the salts. Option A, potash. Option D, option B, soda. Option C, both A and B, both potash and soda. Option D, neither A nor B. Just think about the answer for 10 seconds. Here we go. The correct option is option C both A and B that is both potash and soda. Potash is denoted by the chemical formula K2O and soda is Na2O. Class F fly ash or metacholine is used to prevent efflorescence. What is fly ash? It is nothing but a pozzolanic compound. And we use sealers and coatings to prevent efflorescence. And Making and by making the concrete denser will reduce the permeability thereby reducing the efflorescence caused by this minor compounds that is K2O and Na2O. Box compounds are called as major compounds and these two potassium and soda which, will, which, is, which are the causative compounds for efflorescence are called as minor compounds formed during hydration of cement. So how to prevent it? Uh, we use fly ash sealers and coatings and by making the concrete denser thereby uh, reducing the permeability and her with the uh, efflorescence is reduced. Now let's move on to 10th question. The minimum compressive strength of grade 43 cement cement mortar cube 
at the age of seven days. By the name itself, grade 43 means 43 Newton per mm square is the strength for 28 day cement motor cube. But in, the, in this question, it is asked for first seven days strength. Your options are 23 Newton per mm square, option B 33, option C 43, option D 53. Your time starts now. Here we go. The correct answer is option B, 33 Newton per mm square. Because 43 Newton per mm square is for 28 days. And for 7 days strength, it will be calculated as it is approximately the 75% of the 28 day strength. That is nothing but 43. Now let's see the other compressive strength for other grades. For grade 33, for age 3 days, it will be 16 and for grade 43, it will be 23, for grade 53, it will be 27 and it will be like this only. For 28 days, in the name itself, we get the answer 33, 43, 53 and for 7 days, it will be 75% days maximum and for 3 uh, days, it will be uh, around one third or so. So we can find the uh, compressive strength for in its respective to the age in days. Now let's move on to 11th question. Which compound of cement is responsible for strength of cement? What are the compounds? Compounds like lime, silica, alumina, magnesia, and some sulfur trioxide, alkalis, iron oxide, calcium sulfate these are present in a cement and there are some undesirable compounds also like alkalis are undesirable calcium hydroxide undesirable so now let's see the uh, which is responsible for the strength of cement option a silica option b alumina option c magnesium oxide option d calcium sulfate your time starts now Here we go. The correct option is option A, silica. Silica is responsible for the strength of cement. But lime is the most important compound, but that is not responsible for the strength of cement. Silica is the one which is responsible for the strength of cement. Now let's see the other parameters with respect to the other compounds. Alumina is responsible for quick setting of cement. So quick setting property is uh, imparted by alumina. Calcium sulfate this is nothing but gypsum as we seen in the uh, last question. It delays the setting and it is uh, uh, given, it is added due to the uh, presence of C3A and C3S box compounds. And magnesium oxide, it, it delays the expansion. What is expansion? It is related to the soundness of cement. So magnesium oxide, if present in a proper proportion, it will delay the expansion. So this is all about the some important compounds and their functions. And let's move on to 12th question. The creep strain of cement attains its terminal value by, what is terminal value? The final uh, value with which the creep strain of cement attains. Option A, one year, option B, five years, option C, six months, option D, two years. So your time starts now.
Here we go. The correct option is option B, five years. So to attain its terminal value, uh, the period is five years. After five years, the creep strain of cement attains its maximum value. Creep is nothing but is due to a continuous sustained load for long term. That long term is nothing but five years and where initially it increases and then starts reducing as you seen in this uh, below graph. Initially it starts uh, increases and then after a, a point uh, it will start reducing after unloading or so the creep strain starts reducing. So maximum that is the terminal value will be attained by five years of period. Now let's move on to 13th question. If P is the percentage of water required for determination of normal consistency of cement, then percentage of water to be added for determination of initial setting time is. So P is nothing but the percentage of water which will be added to find the normal consistency. Then what will be the uh, percentage of water to determine the initial setting time. Okay, before moving to the options, first let us see what is initial setting time. It is the time elapsed between uh, the moment that the water is added to the cement. The moment water is added to the cement and to the time that the paste loses its plasticity. So between this time uh, when we add the water and that moment from that moment to the time the paste losing its plasticity that time we call we we'll call as initial setting time and what is final setting time final setting time is the time elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement and the time when the paste has completely lost its plasticity and also has attained sufficient firmness to resist certain definite pressure. So this time we call it as final setting time. Now let's move on to options to see what is the percentage of water required to determine the initial setting time. Option A 0.78 times P. Option B 0.65 times P or we can say 65 percentage of uh, P. Option C 0.75 P. Option D 85 percentage of your time starts now. Give the answer. Here we go. The correct option is option D. 0.85 times P, where P is nothing but the percentage of water required for determination of normal consistency of cement. This normal consistency is determined by Wicket's apparatus. And in uh, Wicket apparatus consists of some components like plunger, needle, and annular collar to find all these uh, timings. So now let's see some more important points. Initial setting time for uh, in terms of percentage of water of normal consistency is 0.85 P as we saw in the question and for soundness test. What is soundness test? It is something related to volume of uh, cement. Soundness test for soundness test which is about 0.78 P. For compressive strength test of cement it is about P by 4 plus 3.0 or we can say 0.25 P plus 3.0. For tensile strength test of cement, it is about P by 5 plus 2.5 or we can say 0.20 P plus 2.5 is the uh, water content required. It's the water required for uh, in the uh, tensile strength test of cement cube. In compressive strength test, it is about P by 4 plus 3. So now let's move on to 14th question. The proper size of mold for
for compressive strength test of cement is see there are two molds for cement it will be different for concrete it will be different here the question asked for cement the proper size of mold for compressive strength test of cement is your options are 7.05 cubic centimeter 15 cc 10.05 cc 12 cc takes 10 seconds and find the correct answer Here we go. The correct option is option A, 7.05 cubic centimeter. Now let's see some more important points. As per, it is as per IS4031 part 6. As per this IS standard, 7.05 cubic centimeter is the standard proper size of mold to test cement for compression uh, strength. In case of concrete, it is as per IS456 and it is about 150 mm3. So there is a difference. For concrete, we will use we'll be using 150 mm3 mold size and for cement compressive uh, compression uh, test, we use 7.05 cubic centimeter or we can say 70. Uh, 7.05 cc or anything so this is the correct uh, size of mold for cement now let's move on to 15th question which of the following is a deliquescent before moving to the options first let us see what is a deliquescent a deliquescent is a compound which will liquefy as soon as possible which will liquefy okay now let's move on to the options option a quick setting portland cement option b white and colored cement option c calcium chloride cement option d water repellent cement your time starts now Here we go. The correct option is option C, calcium chloride cement. Because calcium chloride will liquefy. It has the tendency to become liquid and this calcium chloride compound is used in extra rapid hardening cement because it will induce rate of it will increase the rate of hydration. So it so thereby consequently producing rapid hardening of the cement. So by using calcium chloride, we can produce an extra rapid hardening cement and also uh, rate of hydrogen is high. So there will be more exogenous reaction. Extra rapid hardening cement can be produced. So this is all about the deliquescent uh, compound that is nothing but calcium chloride. Now let's move on to 16th question. The stone produced by molding a mixture of iron slag and Portland cement is. There are many artificial stones that will be used for some decorative purposes and that will be lightweight and will give a more strength than ordinary stone and we can produce with our desirable properties so what is the what is that artificial stone which is produced by a mixture of iron slag and portland cement option a imperial stone option b garlic stone option c ransom stone option d victoria stone your time starts now. Guess the correct answer.
Here we go. The correct option is option B, garlic stone. Now let's see the more important points regarding these artificial uh, stones. Imperial stone is produced by mixing crushed granite with Portland cement. When we mix the crushed granite, uh, like uh, granite chips or maybe crushed more than that, that will be mixed with Portland cement. We will get a stone called imperial stone. Garlic stone is produced by iron sagan Portland cement as we see in the question, which is used for surface drying and flat stones. So every uh, artificially made stone has unique properties and unique uh, uses and applications. So garlic stone is used for surface drains and flat stones. Ransom stone, it is produced by blending silica soda with cement and is used for decorative flooring purposes. Victoria stone, it is uh, produced by granite piece which its surface is hardened by submerged submerging the stone in silica soda for some two months. So this is the Victoria stone, how we will produce. So this is the uh, option, garlic stone, when which will be produced by mixture of iron slag and Portland cement. So these are some of the most important artificial stone that are produced by some mixing two compounds. Now let's move on to 17th question. Which of the following forms of water on its removal causes shrinkage in cement paste? There are some forms of water like capillary water, uh, interlayer water, and absorbed water, etc. Chemically bound water, like that. So, which of the water forms that uh, in on removal causes the shrinkage? Option A, capillary water. Option B, interlayer water. Option C, adsorbed water. Option D, all the above. So, four options are there. Think about the which is the correct option. Here we go. The correct option is option D, all of the above. So the three uh, forms of water, the capillary water, interlayer water, adsorbed water, and removal of these forms of water will cause the shrinkage in cement paste. So what is the consequence of shrinkage? There will be cracks developed on the surface. What are the types of shrinkages? There are three types of shrinkages occurring in a cement paste. The plastic shrinkage occurs during the plastic stage of the cement paste. What is mean by plastic stage? Before the initial setting time, there will be uh, uh, the cement will be under plastic stage. Drying shrinkage occurs during the drying stage. It is uh, in the name itself we can uh, infer the term. Autogenous shrinkage. What is autogenous shrinkage? It's uh, nothing but the volume change without any moisture transfer to the environment so how come a shrinkage happens it internally it happens internally auto shrinkage autogenous shrinkage is caused by reduction in volume when cement hydrates and new products are formed in by the in the result of internal chemical reactions of the components present in the cement so these are these are the three types of shrinkages and uh, in capillary layer, sorry, capillary water, interlayer water, adsorbed water. By removal of these three forms of water, shrinkage will happen. And that depends on the uh, stages. We will classify in three times. Now let's move on to 18th question. In the manufacture of cement, definite proportions of argillaceous and calcareous materials are burnt at a temperature of so what is argillaceous and calcareous materials argillaceous materials are nothing but clay or alumina content 
compound. Calcareous is nothing but calcium. Uh, whichever the um, uh, compound contains the calcium as a com one of the compounds that we will call as calcareous material. Example, lime. For ar argillaceous material, example is clay. So by mixing definite proportions, uh, these two materials, we will obtain cement. So what is the temperature? These uh, proportion, sorry, uh, this mixture is burned. Option A, 425 degrees Celsius. Option B, 1450 degrees Celsius. Option C, 875 degrees Celsius. Option D, 1650 degrees Celsius. Your time starts now. Give the correct answer. Now here we go, the correct option is option B, 1450 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which these two that is argillaceous and calcareous materials are burnt so that we obtain the cement as a product. Argillaceous is nothing but compound that contain alumina or clay or something. Calcareous is calcium carbonate or lime. So by partial fusion at these for of these uh, two materials, we will get cement. So temperature is very high. That will be around 1450 degrees Celsius, which will be given by rotary clean or some uh, mechanical devices. Now let's move on to 19th question. For ordinary Portland cement, the maximum expansion by Lee Chatelier's method should not exceed. So Lee Chatelier's method is used to identify the soundness of cement. So how sound is the cement? Soundness means it refers to, uh, it is synonymous to volume, volume change that is happening in the cement due to the uh, mixture of water and the hydration. So option A, 2 mm, Option B, 5 mm. Option C, 7.5 mm. Option D, 10 mm. Your time starts now. Here we go. The correct option is option D. 10 mm. So the maximum expansion by Lee Chatelier's method for OPC cement should not exit 10 mm. Let's see some more important points. Okay, what if it is more than 10 mm? If it is more than 10 mm, uh, then the cement is said to be unsound. For high alumina and super sulfated cement, super sulfated cement we have seen in the previous questions. Uh, which is used in a marine environments, docks and harbors. So for those cement, for those construction, the Lee Chatelier's method, the maximum expansion, that should be less than 5 mm, unlike OPC. For OPC, it is about 10 mm. For super sulfated cement and high alumina cement, it should be less than 5 mm. Lee Chatelier's method is used to determine soundness caused by free lime only so what about magnesia so magnesia uh, the, uh, the soundness caused by magnesia will be identified by autoclave test so for free lime it is uh, Lee Chatelier's method for magnesia we use autoclave test to identify the expansion now let's move on to 19th question For complete hydration of cement, the water to cement ratio needed is. So what is the complete hydration of cement? Whenever uh, some compounds like uh, bulk compounds and uh, many other process like calcium hydroxide which is undesirable that has to be uh, retarded and uh, there are some other compounds like ettringite and thereby forming e, uh, CHS gel to complete those all the process in hydration 
what is the water segment ratio needed option a less than 0.25 option b between 25 to 0.35 option c between 0.35 to 0.45 option d between 0.45 to 0.60 this is not 060 this is 0 0.60 Okay, so your time starts now. Here we go. The correct option is option C, 0.35 to 0.45. Now let's see. Some more important points. 25 percentage of the water we added by weight of the cement will be used for chemical reaction only. 70 percentage of water by weight of the cement will be used to fill gel pores. Gel pores is nothing but it's formed when uh, C H S H gel is formed. C H S gel is nothing but uh, products of hydration product of hydra one of the products of hydration is the CSH gel calcium silica hydride so about 17 percentage will be used to fill only the uh, gel uh, pores so certain quantity of water is embedded in within the gel pores so that water we will call it as gel water so adding these two 25 plus 17 we will get 42 percentage so 42 percentage of water by weight of cement we add that will be used for chemical reaction and gel pores only so what if if we provide more than 42 percentage of water in approximate in an on an average more than 42 percentage of water by weight of cement is undesirable because it will produce undesirable cavities and holes between the cement particles that will inhibit the activities by the box compound so normally uh, the range of water content that to be added water to cement ratio that to be added for the complete hydration of cement is 0.35 to 0.45 on an average 0.42 now let's move on to 20th question The role of super plasticizer in a cement paste is two. Super plasticizer is nothing but an external chemical compound that, uh, that is added as an uh, extra compound to accelerate or to retard or to enhance some properties and rate of uh, hardening and setting purposes. Option A, disperse the particles. Option B, disperse the particles and also to remove air bubbles. Option C, disperse the particles, remove air bubbles and also to retard setting. Option D, only retard setting. So what is the correct option? Our time starts now. Here we go. The correct option is option C. All that is, it will disperse the particles, it will remove air bubbles, and it, it will also help to retard setting. So, uh, when it comes to retard setting, we will call those as retarders. When it comes to uh, accelerate the hardening uh, rate, we will call those as accelerators. So super plasticizer enhance the workability. Workability is nothing but uh, with which uh, ease with which we can handle the cement. Super plasticizer also impart negative charges to individual particles. It causes high mobility. How high mobility? Because it causes negative charges and it will leave very few air voids. So it is used, actually it is used to remove air bubbles so that uh, there will be no cavities or less cavities. 
it will also decrease freezing and thawing resistance so this is the uh, role these are the roles of super plasticizer in a cement paint now let's move on to 21 rate of setting of cement paste is controlled by regulating the ratio of option a SiO2 silica dioxide to the sum of aluminate aluminum oxide plus ferric oxide Fe2O3 option b SiO2 to Al2O3 option c SiO2 to Fe2O3 option d the reciprocal of the option a so what is the correct answer what time starts now here we go the correct option is option a the ratio of silica dioxide to the sum of al2o3 and fe2o3 so how this affect silica which is uh, responsible to impart this strength as we have already seen in one of the previous questions alumina uh, imparts quick setting iron oxide is responsible for color hardness and strength of cement and it's uh, one of the most important uh, objective type color is imparted by iron oxide not any other Sulfur imparts sound cement, but it should be present in very small amount. If it present in uh, some excess amount, then it will, it will cause undesirable effect. So sulfur has to be present in very small amount, like less than 1% or 0.5% like that, to produce a sound cement. What is sound cement? It is related to volume expansion. So silica imparts strength, alumina quick setting, iron oxide color, hotness strength, sulfur sound cement when, uh, when uh, present in very small amount. Now let's move on to 22. We have to match uh, some of things. Okay, normal consistency test and initial setting time, final setting time. These will uh, are used to find uh, these are uh, used to find by using uh, wicket separators to find the uh, water content normal consistency that is nothing but normal consistency and the initial setting time final setting time initial setting time for OPCs has to be less than 30 minutes final setting time uh, is around some hours then normal consistency test so we have to match uh, the wicket uh, apparatus compound components. Uh, needle is used for which one? Plunger is used for uh, to find which one? An annular collar. Your options are option A this, B, C, D. Just think for 10 seconds and find the correct one. Here we go the correct option is option d 1b 2a 3c so normal consistency is a test we find by using the plunger for initial setting time we use needle for final setting time we use annular collar fitted with needle here in this uh, diagram we can see this is the annular collar fitted in the needle this is the needle this is the plunger so now let's see some more important points for normal consistency test wicket plunger of 10 mm dia 50 mm length is used to find the normal consistency is nothing but the water content so, so water water percentage by weight of the cement so uh, the this plunger this plunger uh, is uh, tend to penetrate up to a depth of 33 
to 35 mm from the top surface or we can say 5 to 7 mm from the bottom of the mold. For initial setting time, we use square needle of 1 mm. So 1 mm square needle is used to find the initial setting time. We already see what we, are, we have already seen what is initial setting time. It is nothing but time elapsed between the moment that the water is added to the cement to the time that the paste start losing its plasticity. So it will be around 0.85 p that is 85 percentage of the uh, normal consistency. So the, the uh, same 33 to 35 percent uh, 33 to 35 mm from the top or we can say 5 to 7 mm from the bottom uh, the penetration will happen. For final setting time um, the needle should not pierce more than 0.5 mm that is the annular collar should not pierce the cement surface after final setting for about more for, uh, not more than 0.5 mm so this is all about the wickets apparatus and its uh, compound next we will move on to 23rd one etringite Etringite is a compound which is formed during the hydration of cement. Cement hydration uh, before the formation of CS hype gel. So etringite, what is etringite? The options are option A calcium aluminate trisulfate hydrate, option B calcium aluminate monosulfate hydrate, option C calcium hydroxide, option D tricalcium aluminate. Your time starts now. Here we go. The correct option is option A. Calcium aluminate trisulfate hydrate is nothing but the etringite. So this is the formula you can see. Ca6 Al2 SO4 thrice OH12.26 H2O. 26 molecules of H2O. How etringite is formed? Because reaction between sulfate ions and the aluminate phases so this uh, this reaction causes the formation of etringite so if this etringite, etringite is actually trisulfate hydrate when we raise the temperature to like 70 to 100 degrees celsius during hydration process this etringite will transform to monosulfate compound and that will be dangerous because it will cause deterioration of the uh, concrete so etringite has to be uh, has to be in such a way that it it should not transform to monosulfate so temperature has to be controlled so etringite is nothing but calcium aluminate trisulfate hydrate now let's move on to 24th question initial setting time is higher for what is initial setting time we have already said time elapsed between the moment adding water and losing its plasticity option a ppc option b portland slag cement option c low heat portland pozzolana cement option d high strength cement your time starts now Here we go. The correct option is option C, low heat Portland Pozzolana cement. Why low heat port PPC is used mainly to construct large massive concrete dams. When we say large concrete massive dams, we require heavy massive quantities of concrete and that concrete has to not set immediately. So initial setting time has to be higher. So that will be higher for low heat cement. In the term low heat, we will we can infer that that the cement consists very low amounts of C3A. 
C3A is nothing but uh, tricalcium aluminate which will be responsible for high rate of hydration uh, consequently has high initial setting time so lowering the amount of C3A as a bulk, co bulk compound in a cement we can produce low heat PPC and that will be used to construct large massive dams and structures like this so in we, if we say reduced proportion of C3S and C3A uh, consequently reduced proportion of C sorry uh, increased proportion of dicalcium silicate so initial setting time has to be about one hour it is highly greater than OPC for OPC it is less than 30 minutes for low heat PPC it is about one hour now let's move on to the last question 25th one Pozzolanic action what is mean by pozzolanic action it is nothing but uh, whenever a uh, pozzolanic material is nothing but a material which has no cementing properties but uh, whenever added with cement it produces cementing properties so your option a calcium hydroxide plus pozzolana plus water gives the CHS gel calcium hydroxide plus pozzolana gives the uh, CHS gel uh, calcium sulfate that is gypsum plus pozzolana plus water gives the uh, CHS gel calcium hydroxide plus pozzolana plus gypsum gives the gel so your time starts now which will be the correct pozzolanic action that will debit Here we go. The correct option is option A. Calcium hydroxide plus pozzolana plus water gives the CSH gel. This is nothing but the pozzolanic action. So what is the pozzolana? Pozzolana is nothing but as we as I have uh, said uh, before this option is nothing but a material uh, added with cement causing cementing properties. It can be siliceous or aluminous material for example calcium clay or fly ash or, or many other uh, compounds are there components are there portland pozzolana cement is mainly used for marine construction in marine environment there will be corrosion so to resist corrosion we use portland pozzolana cement in ppc no lime will be there so that's the beauty of PPC absence of lime so absence of lime uh, which uh, corresponds to higher resistance of corrosion so this is all about the pozzolanic action these are the 25 questions uh, it will be coming in various examinations and these 25 questions are the most important we have to uh, be aware of now let's uh, again meet with different chapters different questions thank you please subscribe my channel for more videos